When it comes to small kitchen appliances, my Vitamix Blender ranks at the top of the list. I think you guys know that I'm slightly obsessed with it and I use it almost daily for a variety of recipes that you can find both on my website and here on my YouTube channel. As you might imagine with extensive use, I've learned quite a few Vitamix tips, tricks, and hacks over the years. And these are things that not only make my life easier in the kitchen as a Vitamix owner, but they also help to ensure that I'm maximizing the use of my blender, which is always a good thing. So today I'm happy to share these eight tips with you, which also help to answer some of your most frequently asked questions. And Vitamix has graciously sponsored today's video. Let's dive in. Next time you remove your lid plug to insert your tamper, take a closer look because you might have missed the fact that your lid plug is also a mini measuring cup with both half ounce and one ounce measures. This is great if you're making a cocktail recipe or if you need to add a smidge more liquid to either a smoothie or a sauce to thin it down. And let's be honest, it's always nice to not have to get another measuring cup dirty. The order in which you load your container is more important than you probably realize. Always load liquids closest to the blades, followed by soft items and then hard or frozen items on top. Having the liquids on the bottom prevents air pockets from forming around the blades, and the weight of the frozen items on top helps to push the other ingredients down into the blades. By loading your container in this order, you'll also prevent your blender from stalling or struggling with hard to blend items on the bottom. So remember this order for both the 48 ounce and 64 ounce containers. Always put liquids first, which includes water, juice, milk, or yogurt, then dry goods such as grains, seasonings, and powders, then leafy greens, fruits and veggies, and finally, ice and frozen ingredients are last. If you have the 20 ounce personal container or the eight ounce blending bowls, remember to reverse this order because you flip the container upside down on top of your Vitamix. Don't let the power and noise of your Vitamix blender scare you because almost everything blends better, faster, and easier when you quickly increase the speed to high. Of course, always start on low, but you wanna quickly ramp up that speed dial. When you blend on high, the motor also stays cool because the cooling fan is maximized. So yes, blending on high rather than medium, especially with thick items like nut butters, actually prevents your machine from overheating. It's blending too long at too low of a speed that will overheat your machine and cause the automatic overload protection to turn the machine off. And if that happens, just let it cool back down before turning it back on. When you're blending thick items like frozen yogurt and nut butters, the tamper is your friend. The tamper can help get things moving again and prevent air pockets from forming around the blades. The tamper will never come into contact with the blades as long as the lid is on the blender, so feel free to use a little muscle and push those ingredients down into the blades. The best way to do this is to press the tamper down towards the four corners of the container until your recipe is blending again smoothly. And just remember never to fill your container more than two thirds full when you're using the tamper. One of the biggest problems I've seen this community have with my own recipes is when they've tried to cut my Vitamix recipes in half. The Vitamix blender needs a minimum amount of ingredients in order for the blades to do their job properly. With too few ingredients, the blades will just splat those ingredients to the outside of the container. For instance, my almond butter recipe calls for four cups of raw almonds. If you try to reduce this recipe and use one cup of almonds, it will simply fail. There's just not enough ingredients to create friction with the blades and turn the almonds into almond butter. Now, likewise, you need to be careful with overfilling your container as well, so always do keep an eye on the maximum fill line. For all of the Vitamix recipes on my website, I use the wet container, though I could have used the dry container for my powdered sugar recipe. So what's the difference between the two? Well, the blades on the wet container blend things together and inward, and the blades on the dry container tend to blast things up and out. Another way to think about it is that the wet container creates a super smooth texture of your recipes with a vortex, and the dry container keeps things more granular with a reverse vortex. Because I predominantly make smoothies, dips, soups, sauces, nut butters, and other creamy items, the wet container is perfect for me. But if you plan on grinding coffee, milling grains, or creating flours, then you might wanna look into the dry container as well. 
When you blend thick ingredients like hummus or nut butter, you absolutely need the Ender Blade Scraper, which is my favorite accessory. This is like a squeegee for the sides of the container and gets under the blades easily, which means you're not wasting any ingredients. One of my other favorite hacks after you've made a batch of almond butter and scraped out as much as you can is this. Add a cup or two of nut milk and a banana and then blend. You've now got an almond butter banana smoothie to enjoy in a container that's much easier to clean. So speaking of cleaning your Vitamix, it's super easy. Just rinse out the container, then fill it halfway with warm water and a drop or two of dish soap. Run it on high for 30 seconds, or if you have a cleaning cycle on your machine, you can press that button as well. Over time, you may notice that your Vitamix container has become cloudy. Now, as you can see, my Vitamix container is not cloudy, but if yours is, it's usually from blending spices or mineral-rich ingredients or from hard water. But here's how you can clean that film off of your container. Fill the container half full with warm water and add one cup of white vinegar. Let the container soak for several hours or even overnight, then pour this out and use a soft scrubber to clean the remaining residue. Just remember that blending rough ingredients like sugar can actually create minuscule scratches on the inside of your container, making it appear cloudy when it's really not. And unfortunately, that's not reversible. If you do plan to blend rough ingredients regularly, I recommend purchasing an extra container so that you have one container ready to go for rough ingredients and one container that's more of your everyday container for all of your smooth ingredient recipes. I hope you found these Vitamix tips, tricks, and hacks helpful. And if you have any additional ones, please do leave them in the comments below. I always love how this community is so helpful to one another in the comments. Speaking of this wonderful community, we also just hit 500,000 subscribers on this channel, which is amazing and I am so grateful for all of your support. In celebration of this pretty awesome milestone, I'm also gonna hold a little giveaway over on my website, including giving away a Vitamix, and I'll have more details in the description box below. All right, that's it for me this week, and next time you see me, I will be back with a tasty new recipe for you. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new recipes or videos, and I will see you guys again next week.